Hi folks, I'm John and through this archway behind me is the Woodland Orchard. Let me show you around. This view always causes me to pause for thought as I come into the orchard because if you cast back in time and take a look at what was here when I first got here you can see there's been quite a transformation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the layout of the site with this, uh, this walk around. Uh, over on to the left as you come through the archway is the coppice area. Uh, we just completed uh, the coppicing of the hazels on their five year cycle this, uh, this past winter. And in front of it is the dead hedge, the first big dead hedge on the site. So the structure of that is now uh, complete and we're just working at filling it with uh, material from the site as we cut back. And then over to the right, it's a little bit of a mess at the moment actually, but that's basically a soft fruit area with raspberries, gooseberries. Uh, I think there's three different kinds, kinds of uh, raspberry and three different kinds of gooseberry in there. That's due a bit of a tidy up. So if we go further down the path, as we get to the end of this dead hedge, the first thing that we see to the left is the what I call the bathtub pond. And you might be able to catch a glimpse of why it's called that, because it is actually an old bathtub. There's a story behind each of these ponds which uh, I'll expand on in, in other videos coming up. But uh, yeah, that at the moment is gradually transforming into a bit of a, a bog area. And the other side of the path is the wildlife pond built during lockdown. Um, I'd started calling it the lockdown pond. But somebody suggested that I call it lockdown, which I think is quite clever. Might stick to that. It's starting to develop and naturalise now, particularly uh, with the establishment of these uh, pond plants in that um, little promontory or island. Uh, and we're going to be adding more uh, plants into that uh, later on in the year. So as I scan round, you can see the, the pond with a soft fruit behind it, the archway, and then the coppice area behind the dead hedge. So that basically constitutes the southern end of the site. And then over here we have the main food forest so this comprises a number of fruit trees we've got pear apple cherry all constituting essentially the canopy of a forest environment with things like rhubarb uh, blackcurrant redcurrant forming a, a shrub layer now the shrub layer here isn't isn't actually as well developed as it should be given the age of this food forest but we're adding to that uh, and again we'll be documenting that going forward in various videos so this central path then comes through the site heading northwards to the right is very overgrown at the moment but that's due to the weather normally we would uh, mow that and uh, that would actually be used as a camping area and yes we have uh, camped out in that area in the past despite the fact that I live on the site holidaying very close to home but the weather's just got in the way of grass mowing this year and um, I'll say more about our strategy for grass management on the site in the future but uh, that is meant to be a sort of lawn type environment suitable for camping in and uh, we have fruit trees in this area as well now this area here in front of us the intention is to develop it into a permaculture orchard with a linear uh, planting scheme uh, two rows of uh, fruit trees trying to mimic a semi-commercial layout if you like whereas the food forest is much more a uh, nature-based nature orientated uh, approach this path continues northwards into what I call the Woodland Strip, which is a narrow area really focused on developing a, a real woodland environment without too much emphasis on, in fact, without any emphasis at all on growing food. It actually is one of the more interesting parts of the site for me, and particularly in a, a sunny, hot day, it's very pleasant to come up here to this top path. Normally this area is much more shaded. We've been doing some pollarding this year. Obviously it's let a lot of light in, um, but as we can see the regrowth has already started. Uh, so here's some really very satisfying regrowth on there. And uh, 
it's only coppiced a short while ago I probably popped the date on as to when it was cut back you can see the growth there has been quite rapid and if we look back along the edge of this path there's various um, trees we can find so this here is an oak tree uh, and that came up from Cornwall it was grown from a nut by a good friend in Cornwall um, one of our favorite trees in this area is the Rowan and you can see a large birch behind that uh, and that in fact the birch was the only tree uh, on the site when, uh, when I first got here you can see we have no problem at all allowing areas to get overgrown this is a, a geranium which provides a lot of ground cover there are some remnants originally the site was planted purely for orchard trees so there are some remnants of that so here in this woodland corner there is actually an apple tree there I believe that's a golden delicious which I'm not going to bother moving it can quite happily contribute to the uh, this purely woodland part of the site and then to my right you can see this is where we have a trained or pleached hedge of mainly of hazel this is not just a hedge it's also a uh, essentially a linear nut orchard it does actually fruit and we do get a food crop off that as well as nuts to grow on um, and uh, further populate the site with hazel and this tree here is absolutely my favorite it's a bit like trying to choose a favorite child i think favorite tree but that one certainly i've uh, got a good connection with this one it, it arrived as a actually quite abused pot grown rowan which had been neglected had fallen on its side had grown very very misshapen and uh, gradually been uh, working it into a shape that i think looks incredible really like that and i grow a lot of rowan from seed uh, and in fact this particular rowan is the mother tree the main mother tree for all the rowan seedlings that uh, i've grown on uh, in the nursery it's a nice evening for just a quiet wander through this uh, woodland orchard you can see probably why i call it a woodland orchard it has very much the feel of a of a woodland uh, but there's mostly comprised of food trees so again there's a a cherry which is due for a bit of a trim uh, this uh, this summer and then alongside that there's a pear tree with another pear tree beyond it one thing that you'll note is that and I'm sure anybody who's into permaculture will have probably seen them already um, we do use comfrey quite a lot on the site and this is one of the comfrey plants that uh, we don't cut back on a regular basis these are allowed to get to full height and to flower and um, they uh, they provide a valuable source of nectar for bees great bee plant um, and we do have comfrey elsewhere on the site which is regularly harvested and then used either as a input to the compost system or simply as a chop and drop um, technique to drop around the base of the fruit trees One thing you also might notice these tripods there's a couple of these tripods dotted around on the site try to keep them out of shot but they do pop up from time to time in the background of videos um, i just use those as a uh, a position for cameras when i'm doing work around the site and want to film it uh, and if anybody knows the, the british folk singer kate Roosby, you might be interested to know that apparently i'm told that those are actually the speaker stands from her first ever pa system there you go, famous speaker stands. I hope that gives you a, a reasonable introduction to the woodland orchard on this very pleasant spring evening. There's also a kitchen garden, but we'll cover that in a future video. Um, and in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope to see you again. If this kind of thing's of interest, please subscribe and uh, follow the journey as we move the site forward. See you soon.